Hello everyone and welcome to the solution video to our first practice exercise. So we're building the personal greeter. Um, if you have not tried this on your own, I urge you to do it on your own. It's going to be a little difficult, especially if this is uh, your first intro into programming. Um, this might be uh, a little hard. You might have to Google a few things, but I really hope that you have given it a shot and I'm assuming you're here now just to verify your own code. So if you did not finish the exercise though, uh, no worries. Let's go ahead and learn um, how we can solve this. So actually, close this early. So let's take a look. So the first one is must allow the user to play as much as they want. So let's go ahead and make um, the feature that does that. So we'll go ahead and explicitly um, define this variable as a bool, and we want to check if the if the uh, user is um, still running. So we can just check is running. All right, and we can assign that to be true, since when the user starts the application, they will want to see this uh, essentially run. They won't want to know, hey. The first thing they want, the first thing that they see, shouldn't be, "Hey, do you actually want to use this?" Well, they open the application, so of course they want to see it. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and make a while loop, um, and put is running in here. So if this is running, then we're going to ex execute our code in this while loop. So we can say console um, write line. Do you want to run this again? All right. And because again, right now we're just validating to make sure that it can go, um, they can do this as many times as they want um, and quit whenever they want. So since that is our first acceptance criteria, we can go ahead and write down, do you want to run this again? Um, if Actually, this is right line. We need to get some input. So we need to say console dot read line. All right. And then that's going to be um, we can do string uh, is running response equals this read line. All right, so now we have the string variable for is running response, or the string variable for uh, this read line right here. So when the user inputs text through this read line, it's going to be stored in this is running response. And if is running response equals yes, then actually, wait a minute, we're not validating for yes, we're validating if they want to stop. So it'll actually be no. So if it's no, that means is running equals false. All right. So let's give this a shot, see if it works. All right. Do you want to run this again? Yes. Do you want to run this again? Yes. Do you want to run it again? No. And there we go. All right, so now our first acceptance criteria is taken care of. Must allow the user to play as much as you want. Must greet differently depending on the age is our second criteria. So let's jump right into that one. So let's go ahead and make a greeting here. Console dot right line. And we can say welcome. What is your name? And we can say, well, we can do this. We'll make an explicitly defined variable as a string, and we'll have name. All right, and we won't initialize it yet. We'll initialize it down here. So name equals console dot read line. All right. So now our name is equal to whatever the user inputs. All right. 
So now we can say console dot right line. Um, let's see, hello, and then we want to put our name. So do you remember how to do that? It is through string concatenation. So we're going to do the dollar sign, let the, the compiler know that there is a variable in here, and then we're going to um, wrap the variable with some curly braces, and we'll say name. All right, hello, whoever your name is. What is your age? All right, and then we'll do the same thing here. We can make a variable for our age, and we're going to do, of course, the same thing. So age is going to equal console dot read line. Oops. All right. Let's see, age, uh-oh. You know what this means? We can't actually um, say our age is what the user inputs. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Actually, we can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a temporary variable called my, or called age response, all right? Now, age is going to equal this method, you probably have Googled this if you got it. It's going to be convert dot to int. And we'll do 32 since that is the default string. And then we'll just enter in age response. All right, there we go. And now the error is complete. So if we need to, this is called casting. Um, you can just call convert and then it'll convert to an integer. Um, if you need to convert something to a string, for instance, age, you can just do uh, to string, and that automatically converts it to a string if you need to convert that. So to string is easy. If you need to convert to anything else, use the convert, um, the convert object, and you can use the to int32 function and pass in uh, the age response right here. So again, this is, um, we can get into how this is constructed a little later, like what our functions and objects, we'll actually be getting that into, getting into that in the next series. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, um, continuing on. So our age, we have it now. Um, now we want to greet the user based on their age. So we'll use a switch since we'll have multiple different ages and we will um, be validating, uh, or we will be handling each age differently. And since it's just gonna be the age, it doesn't really make too much sense to make a bunch of if statements. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say case. All right, this is where it gets interesting. So what if we want our age to be 18? All right, then we can just do the break right here, and then we can say console dot right line. Um, you are too young to be playing this game. Um, go home. Go home. All right. So, but this is only for age 18. What about someone younger? All right, so this is where it gets interesting. We can do a simple, we'll create a temporary variable and we'll call this, um, we'll call it my age and, and say when my age is less than, let's say 18. All right, so this is, we have, our, uh, we have our age and then our case, and then this temporary variable is automatically assigned to the value of this age. And then this when is essentially saying when uh, my age is less than 18. So when this temporary variable, this allows us to actually do some logic and some comparing of this actual age. 
because without that, we wouldn't actually be able to compare it. It would just be um, a basic value. But if it's going to be anything less than 18, we can say you are too young to be playing this game. Go home. All right. So what we can, we can do with the switch statement then is I strongly advise against copying and pasting, but in this case, um, it would make sense. So we can have is under 18, um, and here we have when my age is less than, let's do um, less than 70, and my age is, let's see, greater than or equal to 17, we can say, thanks for entering your information. Now, if this, if our age is over 70, over or equal to 70, then we can say um, you are very old um, thanks you are very old no offense there we go so we're not the most classy chatbot but it'll do okay and then what about our default our default will just be console dot right line. Um, see, I don't believe actually. Aha. So it can't actually, this default is redundant and there's no way it can fall out of the switch statement. So there's really no, actually, wait a minute, excuse me. What am I talking about? Disregard that because we can add this break. So it's essentially looking for this break right here. There we go. All right. So the default response is going to be, um, how did you get this response? Anyways, all right, so there we go. We have um, an application. Let's run it and make sure that we have everything. Let's see. Uh, must allow the user to play as much as they want, must greet differently depending on age, and must tell the user how many years until they are 100. All right, well, we have everyone except for number three. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. What is your name? It's Ian. What's your age? I am 54. Um, thanks for entering this information. Do you want to run this again? <gasps> what? Thanks for entering your information. Oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. Whoops. Um, that's exactly what we were supposed to get. All right. Thanks for entering your information. Now, let's take a look. Oof, that's bad. Let's take a look at my spelling error. Actually, no, we can't, oof. Um, we'll say yes. What's your name? John. Hello, John, what's your age? I am 12. You are too young to be playing this? Go home. No, I'm good. Chatbot was rude. All right. So now, outside of the switch statement, we can say console.writeline. Um, let's try something. So we can then say, um, we're going to concatenate this. We want to tell the user how many years they have until um, they are 100. You have, so we could say, um, you have, boom. All right, so what we're going to do is age minus 100 years until you are 100. 
and that should do it um i believe that uh that that is the logic so again we'll go ahead and run this one more time what's your name it's ian hello ian what's your age i am 90. you have negative 10 years until you're 100. what so 90 uh <laughs> i can't read all right let's bring it back 100 minus age there we go okay so now we should be good to go that's why we validate and that's why we test when we make stuff so let's see let's run that again all right what's your name it's ian what's your age i am 10. you are too young to be playing this game go home you have 90 years until you are 100. Do you want to play again? Yes. What's your name? John. What's your age? I'm 80. Actually, 90. It crashed on 90 last time, or it looked weird on 90. So we'll hit 90, and you have 10 years. And that's correct. That is the application. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this. I hope this makes sense. Um, of course, as we learn new concepts, and we apply them, um, we have to look up, or we sometimes have to look up um, a few cases, a few um, outside instances, and that's all part of the process of making software. So don't be afraid to Google things, look through the documentation, that's all part of what we're doing. So in fact, the better you get at that, the better of a developer and programmer you will become. So I'm excited to start section two. We're going to jump into um, either, so section two is going to be object-oriented principles, and then I'm also going to have a section purely based on lists and how to work with other types of collections as well. So because that is a very big section, and there's a lot of things that I want to cover. Um, so join me in those sections, and until then, I will see you next time.